Hi, Nomi Now listeners. It's great to have you here today. And joining me, we have Sophie Min, an incredible jazz pianist and composer who is based in Brisbane. So hi, Sophie. How are you? Hello. So what we're going to do first is we're going to jump into our hot seat round. This is a staple in the Nomi Now series. And what we're going to do in this is I'll ask a couple of questions and you'll have 10 to 15 seconds to answer them as quickly as you can. Yeah, sounds good. First one is what is your favorite color and why? My normal answer would be yellow Mm -hmm. because it reminds me of um, younger memories and reminds me of like gold and brightness. Mm -hmm. But it depends on my mood. Sometimes I change my mind. Okay, I prefer blue today or purple the other night. Mm -hmm. But mostly yellow or like a blue types of colors that I like the most. Yeah. Cool. And then into maybe a harder question. Um, if you had to choose five people to join you for dinner, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely my parents. And maybe Keith Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> if that's allowed. And I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's allowed. Anyone? Oh yeah. Uh, and probably two of my best friends in Brisbane and in Korea. I'm not gonna mention their names. And then the last one is: What is one of the nicknames that your friends have given you? Oh. So, most of my Aussie friends call me Minister. Mm-hmm. Or like jazz minister, something like that. Mm-hmm. I still feel awkward, but I'm. I just say, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm a minister. Um, <laughs> or rather, my Korean friends know, um, know me as from No Sleeves. Uh, in Korea, it's called uh, Min Sohme, which is similar to my Korean name Min So Young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well then, we'll ju- with that we're left on a lighter note, we'll jump into our questions. And so, Sophie, you have an album that you actually are releasing today. Would you like to share a bit about that album? Sure. So the Sophie Min Jazz Orchestra or Sophie Min Orchestra album has been released today. Um, I was very lucky to have all of my uh, colleagues from the Con alumni and um, some of young musicians that mm-hmm. I've been collaborating with uh, for a long time. Um, and the music are all of my compositions and uh, they all are recorded live at the Brisbane Jazz Club with the amazing Mark Smith. The biggest experience for the um, composing process was um, uh, composing for the specific musicians and specific uh, improvisers that I known for uh, was, a, was a great um, um, method in my composing. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any like specific song that you love, especially out of that album? I like Bad Weather, which is the um, title track of the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like 13 minutes length and um, have um, very different like, um, imaginarity move, move, movement and um, transitions uh, mm. in a song. And yeah, I just um, love the um, love the moments how string quartets can be the great background sound. Uh, to support the horn sections or all or the other ways. Yeah. So did you compose this song yourself or did someone else collaborate with you to write the song? How did that kind of happen? I composed it uh, by myself. Yeah. Just start to set up the um, line up first. Um, mm-hmm. whom, whom, uh, who's going to be involved in this Project. When you wrote the song Bellwether, what inspired you to write this song? 
Um, that's your quick question. So, the bell weather, the meaning of bell weather, which means um, Jesus Christ. So, like, um, I just was uh, reading some Bible chapters, mm -hmm. and um, I believe in God. Also, I've been always eager to write some about the Bible and messages from the Bible. And yeah, just um, I just wanted to write um, each pieces that have um, some stories of Jesus Christ. And from one to eight, it's kind of the journey of um, his um, life. One of the biggest inspirations um, come from musicians would be like um, Miho Hazama or Pat Metheny, Maria Schneider, mm -hmm. like um, Darcy James Argue, and yeah, many more that I've been listening to. So Sophie, would you care to share with us your earliest music memory? Sure. Um, so my earliest music memory is piano playing from like age two or something. My mom brought me to an um, auntie's place and yeah, I just played some music for her for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, I also highly involved in a church choir playing and music theatre experience at my earliest time and that really has increased my interest in music mm -hmm. i got my first piano when i was 14 which is pretty late but uh, many of the time i spent playing piano at church and i remember there was a fair amount of tapes and cds at home the classical pop contemporary music a cappella and musical theater so I used to pick one tape and lay down and listen for a couple of days until I can retain and like memor memorize it, the whole music in my mind. Yeah. And I was interested in the use of harmony in the piano accompaniment and counterpoint lines in quiet parts. They were very attractive to my ears. Mm. So have you done um, much accompaniment then for choirs? Yes. Um, in my primary school and middle school and high school, whole time I was playing for choirs or I, I was singing my alto part. Yeah. Cool. And so are you still doing that today as well, accompanying different choirs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was involved in the Raised Voices Choir at the Queensland Conservatorium for two or three years and yeah I'm always happy to accompany for vocalists and do some collaborate. You shared also about how you compose that piece um, and that whole album that's getting released today mm -hmm. but can you tell us about how you fell in love with composing? So when I compose music I think it needs a lot of focus um, during the process and I just love composing and I actually have the opportunities to hear the sound from mm -hmm. the musicians yeah if I can hear it in the real time and that really thrills me yeah to write more or to play more yeah so Composing is an absolute um, happiness for me. And Sophie, you've just shared, I mean, how you love composing and you love hearing your music being played. Yeah. But also a performer yourself. So what have been some of the different venues that you've performed at and maybe some of the highlights that you've had while performing? My highlights were um, playing in the JM Jazz World Orchestra in 2015. We did some European tour. Mm -hmm. like, uh, we toured in uh, seven different countries and played in some major uh, international jazz festivals. 
um, I was involved in a BAMP International Jazz Workshop in 2018 and then got to be able to um, work with like um, outstanding uh, musicians and standout faculties from mostly New York and LA and, and yeah, from uh, some of Europe side too. Mm. So yeah, um, that gave me to record some music with the musicians and yeah, I was able to see some um, absolutely like an ex ex like, um, exceptional performance of faculty members. Uh, yeah, I think my creative like practice has been developed from this kind of experience, I believe. So if you had to choose between composing for the rest of your life or performing for the rest of your life, would you be able to choose? Or would that be too difficult a decision for you? Oh, okay. Um, I would... I would go both, mm -hmm. uh, just performing, teaching, and composing would go forever. But, um, yeah, if I had to choose, I would perform because I'm an improviser and jazz artist. So I would be still composing in the improvised, improvisative like a, a, a setup. Mm -hmm. So I think improvising and composing um, can be different, but also at the same time, it has quite a, like a seamless boundaries. Mm. Yeah. So even though you'd still be performing, you'd also still be composing within your performance. I think so. Right. So it sounds like you love both of them though. You really wouldn't want to choose. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I should not have this <laughs> question. <laughs> but you do, actually, you just touched on how you also do some teaching, though. Um, do you do that online or do you have face-to-face -face lessons outside of this time? Yeah, a good question. I have some regular students in private at home, or so I do some online teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um I think I, I was able to uh, shift my students to online or just, just do as it is in person. So yeah, that was great. Cool. And I've had the privilege of being one of your online students. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult sometimes, like, because everyone's at home because of, like, isolation and stuff. So yeah, trying to do this sort of stuff and... Yeah. We're a, we're a noisy family, even though we're not super big. Like, it feels like a big family to me, but big families would think we're small. Um, it's a quite a big family. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all musical, though, and we're all very... Oh, wow. We to, like, stay quiet. That's great. That's great. I'm the only one who plays music in my family. Do you have other siblings? I have two younger brothers. Young brothers, yeah. One plays guitar actually. The other one plays bass guitar. Uh, not, not in a professional way. So Sophie, you just talked about before how composing is actually involved in improvising. So when you're improvising, you're just composing on the spot. Would you like to give us a demonstration of maybe composing or improvising on the spot? Yeah, for sure.
brought up some uh, uplifting, like a charming sound. I, I beginning was like that, and then I did build like um crunch harmony mm. in the middle of the song, and yeah, I think it's just kind of like a mixture of different harmonical blocks rather than some melodical lines or something else. Mm. But yeah, uh, so if if I have more time, I would give more <laughs> improvised. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a few seconds of improvising, I think it was. So as you're improvising, like, what are you thinking? I know some people will ask, how do you memorize your solo? Um, but I guess the art of the improviser is just making it up on the spot. It's not memorized, it's just playing. But then what are you actually like, what's going through your head as you're playing? Just then, I think it mostly just happened. I just, yeah, inspiration probably was our conversation mm -hmm. and just the feeling and the edge of our conversational part has been gone through to my improvising just then. It just sounds like it naturally just comes from you and you've had years of reading books and years of listening to music and now it kind of just comes out of all of the built up sounds that you've have, have had come in your ears over the years. Yeah, right. Um, so I think when you just sit down and just play something without any pressure about practice this or this, or uh, prepare for your exams or whatever, and you can uh, you in, you really instantly feel okay playing instrument or improvising an instrument can give you kind of joy that um okay this is me actually I'm a player I'm an artist well I can create what I want on this instrument so that is a complete um, bless i think my family members are not quite musical mm -hmm. so i really appreciate to uh, make some make a chat about this kind of thing with other musicians like you mm. so yeah she's special well it's special for me too thank you sophie <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Know Me Now with Sophie Min this week as we got to know her behind the stage. Now keep watching and you can see some behind the scenes moments and make sure you subscribe below this channel to get some more awesome updates with artists as we interview them throughout the next few weeks. And then also in the comments below you'll be able to check out all of Sophie's music and her different social media sites. So I encourage you to click on them and go and check her out as well. See you guys next week. What I actually realized is like our clothes, like they really match for like an interview as well. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That was really good. Good together. Autumn vibe. Yeah. <laughs>